Before we add resources to our various activities here, I want to point out a couple of things. One is that you'll notice that I have some of my activities. They are dependent on a predecessor being completed, so everything in this particular uh, set of activities uh, is using finish to start relationships, so we aren't using anything uh, special as far as the types of relationships here. But you'll notice here that I've made all of these driving tasks, uh, driving down to Atlanta, dependent upon not the tasks involved in packing the apartment or a finishing task here, but in fact on the entire sub-deliverable of packing the apartment up. This is very useful because this way it makes our um, diagram much more clean and also we may add other tasks in here as we're going along and we don't have to want to go back and rethink these dependencies. We know that we're not going to drive off in these trucks and John's car uh, down to Atlanta until we have the apartment here in Columbia packed up. So uh, this way we are just looking for this sub-deliverable to be completed before we move forward with the actual driving off. Now we want to go ahead and add some resources to this project so we can find out how much it's going to cost to do this with our friends and whether we're actually likely to make any money on this. So what we're going to do first is uh, go to the resource sheet. So I'm going to do that here. Uh, the Gantt chart is uh, what I'm looking at right now. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to choose resource sheet. Uh, I, if I was at the Gantt chart section here and I had the uh, view bar turned on, so I can turn it on that way, I would then kind of uh, scroll down until I got to resource sheet. So here's where we, where we can actually enter different uh, types of resources. So let's start out with uh, a resource that uh, we're highly dependent on here, and that is John's Friends. So we're going to enter Friends, and that's going to be a work type of resource. So uh, because it's a work type of resource, we can set the maximum number that we have. In this case, John has four friends that are willing to help him out with this particular project. And lucky for John, their standard rate is $0 per hour. So we're going to leave that as it is. John is also going to have some other re work resources. He's going to rent a truck. Uh, let's say he's going to rent a, a, a smaller truck. And that's going to cost him uh, just one of them he's going to rent. So we'll leave that at 100% for the level. It's going to cost him $140 per day. Okay, And then truck number two is going to be a little bit bigger truck. So that's going to cost him $240 per day. He's going to also have some... Uh, expenses that are going to just be outright costs he's going to have to pay. For example, he may have to pay for gas for the truck and for his car. So we're going to put that in. That's not a work resource, that's just going to be a cost. So we're going to get to enter what that cost is when we actually assign it to our different resources. We're going to have oh, probably some other costs as well. We're going to have to buy meals for folks. Uh, we're probably also going to have some flights because we're going to fly our friends back to Columbia, Missouri after they have driven us down to Atlanta and helped us unpack some hotels while they're in Atlanta. And we might have just some miscellaneous costs. Okay, so I'm going to enter those. I'm going to go back and change all these now to costs. You'll notice that by default it comes up with work as the type of resource. Oh yes, it can do this faster. I'm just going to plod along and do it my way that I like to do it. Thank you very much. Um, we're going to have a few other material resources as well. So we're going to just say that John, uh, when he's running the trucks, is also going to buy some boxes. And those boxes are going to be used to pack up uh, various parts of his apartment. So he's going to have large boxes that he's going to purchase, so a large box. Uh, He'll purchase a number of those. Those are material resources. So in this case, let's say that a large box costs him, oh, seven dollars. And then he's going to also have some medium boxes. It's also going to be a material, and it's going to cost him five dollars for the medium boxes. And then small boxes. Let me go back.
back and change that there so it says box so I don't get confused. Um, <clears throat> that's also going to be a material resource and that's going to cost, oh, let's just say that's uh, only $4 for a small box. So now just to review, we have a uh, three re work resources. We have our friends and we have these two trucks. We have 400% of our friends. We have 100% of each truck. Our friends are $0 per hour, and the truck one is $140 per day. Uh, truck two is $240. We also have some costs that are going to be associated with this uh, move, but we're going to enter those uh, as we estimate them or as they incur if we're actually uh, keeping track of our receipts in Microsoft Project as well. We're also going to have some material costs. These are going to be things that are be going to be consumed or used up. We can't resell them at the end of this. Uh, we don't rent them by the hour or anything like that. So we're going to buy these boxes and use them for the move and we're not going to worry about what happens to them next. Now that we have our resources entered, we're going to go ahead and assign these to our various activities. We'll see that there's a little bit a different way that we assign materials versus costs versus work resources to our activities. So let's go ahead and go back to the uh, Gantt chart and get started. So there's several different ways that we can assign resources to activities. I'm going to show you the one that I think is the uh, most methodical, most reliable, uh, especially as you're getting started here. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to click on my activity. Uh, this one is to have lunch delivered from the sub shop for friends that are helping. So we're going to have this meeting with uh, our friends before we actually uh, start the moving, um, probably the day before. And uh, I want to assign uh, a resource of uh, a cost of that meal. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come over to this resource ribbon or resource tab, and there'll be a icon here for assign resources. That will pull up this dialog box. And what's kind of neat about this is we can assign resources through here. We can also remove resources through here. But uh, we don't have to just uh, assign our resource, close it, go on to the next one, open it, close it. We can actually leave this dialog box open, and we can select different tasks kind of in the background here, and it will let us then assign resources to whatever task happens to be highlighted. Okay, so it isn't uh, really that slow. It uh, works very well uh, to assign resources fairly quickly. So uh, in order to have lunch delivered, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a meal cost. Now in this case, I don't select particular units. I'm going to just enter the cost of that meal. So I'm going to uh, click over here uh, where I have meal and then cost in the cost column, and I'm going to say that it's $60 for the cost of that meal. Now I can press uh, return and it will assign this, or I can just hit the assign button up here. Either way, it will now assign this particular resource, in this case a cost resource of $60, to this activity. You notice that any resources that are assigned to the task that is that is highlighted will be checked off here. There will be a check mark there. Okay, the next one is distribute, uh, develop and distribute schedule. So um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select that particular task and then I'm going to assign a miscellaneous cost. Let's say I have to go down to Kinko's and copy some uh, part of my schedule or the map to get to Atlanta or something like that. So I'm going to just put in here $15 of costs. Make hotel arrangements in Atlanta. This is also going to be a cost. This is going to be a cost for the actual hotel. So once we have make sure everybody's on board and has agreed that we're uh, leaving, we're going to go ahead and uh, incur some costs there of reserving a hotel for our friends in Atlanta. So I'm going to say that that's a $600 cost because we're going to go ahead and prepay at this time for those hotels. Moving on down to this uh, next major deliverable of packing the apartment, we do have to have the rental trucks available while we're packing up the apartment so we can load them at the same time. 
So I have, uh, that's the reason I have this particular activity here. We're going to go get the trucks from the rental place and we're going to have them available. Now what we do here is we don't put a cost um, uh, information in here. In this particular instance, since it's a work resource, we assign the percentage. So in this case we need 100% of truck 1 to be there. And I also need 100% of truck two to be there. Okay, and it will calculate the cost based on the daily rate, the hourly rate, or whatever it is. Now, in order to pack up the kitchen, uh, I'm going to need my friend, or at least one of my friends, to do this. So I'm going to assign a friend at 100%. And I'm also going to assign some of these boxes. So let's say for the kitchen, I'm going to um, uh, these materials, we're going to enter the number of units as well. Uh, it won't be a percentage, it'll be a number. So I'm going to say that I need 10 medium boxes. And I need, uh, let's say, 10 small boxes as well. Okay. Go down here to pack living room. I once again need a friend to do that, 100%. It's going to take them all day to pack that living room up. And we're going to use, in this case, some uh, large boxes now. I can use these little arrows here to go up. You notice it has uh, increments of 0.5. It's kind of odd to have half of a box being used. But we're going to say that we need eight large boxes here. And we need uh, five medium boxes. And we need five small boxes. Notice that it's calculating the cost based on the number of units. For packing up the bedroom, I also need a friend to do this. And I'm going to need, uh, once again, let's say eight large boxes. And I'm going to need five medium boxes. Packing up any other remaining items, stuff from the hallway closet, stuff that might be outside, we're going to need a friend to do that as well. And we're going to need. Uh, a uh, bunch of large boxes. Let's say we need 10 of those, and we need 10 medium boxes as well. And we'll, we'll also throw in here some small boxes. I don't know if we've used very many of those. Okay, so now we have these material costs as well as um, the uh, friend that's actually going to be doing this. Let's say that we actually, our friend uh, backs out on us and we have to put in a resource here that's actually somebody we're hiring to pack this. So we could then substitute in, there would be an actual cost associated with that then. Okay, let's move on to driving the truck one down to Atlanta. So I obviously need truck one for that. So I need 100%. Whoops, now I kind of double clicked on that. That brings up more information about the truck. I'm going to hit cancel here. So if you do double click on any one of these and it brings up a dialog like that, don't don't fret. Just go ahead and close it. I'm going to need 100% of truck one. I'm also going to uh, need a friend to uh, drive that truck as well. Uh, and I'm also going to have some gas costs associated with this. So in this case, let's say that I, it's going to take uh, $250 of gas to uh, get that truck down to Atlanta. Let's also say that our um, friends that are riding in that truck, they're going to want to stop and get some pop along the way or get something uh, to eat. So let's just give $50 of miscellaneous um, petty cash for them to use when they're... Um, driving that truck down to Atlanta. Driving truck two to Atlanta, I obviously need 100% of truck two. I need 100% of one of my friends. And uh, I also need some gas. So I believe we said $250 uh, in gas or something like that. And then um, for my miscellaneous cost, I'm once going to Again, going to have $50 of miscellaneous for them to stop and get something to eat or something to snack on along the way. Drive uh, John's car to Atlanta. For that, I just need a friend to do that. And I will need uh, some money for gas. Hopefully, it's not as bad uh, as the trucks. Let's say it's $100. And we also need some 
miscellaneous expenses allocated to that. Okay, let's go down to unpacking in Atlanta. We're going to reserve, once we get down to Atlanta, we're going to reserve some flights back to Columbia, Missouri. So we have a cost of those flights for our friends, and let's just say that that's uh, going to be $1,000. We're going to also get a shuttle van for them back from the airport to their house, put that on a miscellaneous, and let's say for all four friends, that's going to cost us 250 bucks. So we're going to go ahead and make those reservations and prepay for our friends there. And uh, we also need to have uh, this next task, the first one under unpacking apartment, have rental trucks at apartment. We also need to have those rental trucks available at the apartment to be unpacked. So I, once again, there's not going to be any gas costs associated, but I do need to have 100% of truck one there, and I need to have... 100% uh, of truck two there as well. At the end of the day, we'll go ahead and return the trucks to U-Haul uh, or wherever we got them from, and uh, we can then um, stop incurring that cost. So unpack the kitchen. Uh, we've already kind of expended the material expense of the boxes here, so all I need now is a friend to do that. So for each one of these, I need a friend. I'm not sure that that took there. I did, forgot to uh, click a sign, so I'm going to go back and do that. Make sure that each one of these unpack has friends at 100%. If you have to accidentally added at uh, 150, you can go back and uh, click remove and uh, or go back and adjust it, and it will then adjust the uh, allocation accordingly. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to double check my work. It's always a good uh, idea to double check your work. Uh, as you saw there just at the end, it's easy to sometimes click off of uh, the dialog box and think that something's assigned when it's not. So um, we always want to double check our work, make sure that it all makes sense here. Looking good so far. It doesn't look like I've made any other mistakes. I'd correct any mistakes that I'd made along the way. If I had allocated some friends at 175% or something like that, I'd. Uh, change that. So now I can go ahead and uh, stop assigning resources. I'm going to close this dialog box. You notice that the Gantt chart uh, puts those resources out to the uh, right hand side by default. We can uh, alter that if we'd like. We will show you that later when we talk about different ways to format and uh, print out things from Microsoft Project. But what's really neat about this is we can now in our table form here, is we can not only see what the various um, durations are for our different tasks, we can actually see what the costs are. So I'm going to insert a column here called cost. And then we can see the cost. It's going to be rolled up by different uh, sub-deliverables here. So you can see those costs associated with different parts of this. So unpacking in Atlanta, which includes getting our friends back, that's going to be about $1,600. Okay, so let's actually add a summary task for the entire project here. There's a couple different ways we could do that. I could create a, a task manually and indent everything from it. But I also know that I come, if I come over here to Format and I choose Project Summary Task, it will show me that the total cost of this is $4,227, okay? So it looks like John and his friends are only going to have a couple hundred bucks to share each when this project gets over because he had $5,000 from his um, company to uh, help with the move. So it looks like it'll be just... Uh, uh, 
a little bit less than $800 that they'll actually have left over. So this is where we could start to look at this project and we could start to um, look at our resources, look at our costs, and start to figure out things like, hey, what if we just rented a car and we didn't have them fly back? Uh, we had them drive back. Would they be willing to do that if it would mean they each got a couple hundred extra dollars for this? Um, could we uh, go around and find some uh, boxes that we wouldn't have to pay for? Is there a way that we could rent just one huge truck and not have to take two trucks? Um, we can start to break these things down as far as their costs and their amount of work that it's taking by different sub-deliverables and see uh, also if we could just outsource entire parts of uh, uh, this project to someone else or if we could make some substitutions and make it a little bit uh, better off for John and his buddies. So hopefully that gave you a good overview of how we can allocate cost resources, work resources, and material resources to the various tasks within Microsoft Project.